In this video, I'm going to show you how to distribute your CSProj settings via a NuGet package. Distributing settings via a NuGet package can be incredibly handy for things like setting internals visible to and global usings, amongst other things. The project that I'm going to show you is available to my GitHub sponsors, along with all past and future code, as well as other tidbits as I work on them. See the link in the description or the one on screen now for more information. In this solution, we have two different projects, one that contains the settings we are going to distribute and the other imports our package as an example. Let's take a quick look at our settings project. First, in the CS proj, you'll see that there are a few settings that you might not be familiar with. The first is include build output. I've set this to false because we don't want any of our build output to be shown in our destination package. Although if you do have a DLL that you want to be included, you need to admit this property. Setting development dependency to true means that when this package is referenced, it will not have its contents added to the reference project as part of its output. We'll see how this is done a little bit later on. Next, inside of our item group, we add our settings to two different folders. One of these is called build and the other one is called build multi-targeting. The build folder is imported when the project uses a single target framework and build multi-targeting when you target multiple frameworks, such as when you target .NET 5 and .NET 6. Typically, it's best to copy your files into both places. As we do this, we explicitly look for two different files, one called package ID props and the other one called package ID targets. These are special files that when present in one of the previously mentioned build folders will be added to the CS proj either at the start or at the end. Note, this happens behind the scenes for you and I'll show you how this is done later. When a user props file is added at the start of the CS proj and for a targets file, it's added right at the end. For this project, I have not set a package ID. So the package ID will just be the name of my project code with stew dot build. This means that our targets file will need to be called code with stew dot build dot props or code with stew dot build dot targets. In this example, I've used the package ID dot targets version because we want to apply our standard settings after everything else has been done by the user. This means we can do things like provide default values if they are not already filled in. If we take a look inside of our target file, you can see that we import the properties.props file, which is located inside of our build folder. When this is packaged in our NuGet package, it will be in the same directory and we won't have the same folder structure as we do now. You can, of course, change the folder structure inside of your NuGet package as you desire. So if we take a look inside of our props file now, you'll be able to see we set a load of different settings just to show you the power of this approach. Firstly, we set a package readme file if it's not already been set. This is because NuGet.org has recently added the ability to show a readme on the NuGet Explorer pages. Next, I show a couple of different ways of importing different attributes. First, we have the older way of doing an assembly attribute include for an internals visible to. Then I show the new way of how to do an internals visible to. Next, we've got a couple of different ways of setting a global using statement. For example, just a normal global using statement, an aliased one, or indeed a static one. So now if we switch across to our test library project, you can see that I've included this restore sources element just to make it a little bit easier for me to develop locally. All this means is I don't have to set up a new get config with this in it. It just automatically restores based on this. Next, we have the package reference. As you can see at the end, we have this private assets equals all. This comes from the development dependency attribute that we added to our other project earlier. What this means is that none of the output from this package will be added to the build, but its contents are available for the build itself. 
meaning we can access the properties in the targets file that we set earlier, but it's not included in our build output for this project. So to show you how this works in a little bit more detail, now I'm going to build this package. We can see a little bit better of what's happening by heading to the object folder and then looking for our project name .nuget.g.targets. Inside here, we can see that we have an import statement and the project goes to the NuGet package root with our package and our version and then the path with inside build folder because we're targeting a single framework here, you can see our targets file. This file is one of the files that is looked at by the .NET tool chain when a project is built. So anything that's added into here, such as the file above, will be included as part of the build. Unless the exclude restore package imports property equals to true. So now let's take a look at the package itself. So if I open up my folder and use NuGet Package Explorer to look at the generated package, you can see that we have the author's element has been set for us. The readme has been set, including the readme in the package contents. And you can see that we have no dependencies. This is the exact output that we wanted. That's it for this video. Hopefully you learned a trick or two. If you liked the video, please hit the like button below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with more tips and tricks.